Hey folks, Universe here. If you bought a first generation Aya Neo 2 or Geek, you might have heard about the free heatsink upgrade kit that the folks at Aya are giving out. Well, free plus shipping. They even made a very brief tutorial video that I used to do the upgrade. I'm going to link to the original video and also put timestamps and clips in this one to sync up. And that video makes things seem pretty smooth and easy, but after doing this myself, I'm not so sure about that. This is definitely a do-at-your-own-risk kind of option. I've been taking apart phones and putting computers together for almost a decade, and I have some professional experience with this stuff, and I'd still rate this at an intermediate level for repair. It stops short of having to solder stuff, and that's usually my no-go zone as a casual. I'm going to try to explain most things for beginners that maybe have upgraded some RAM before, but be warned. And the folks at Aya and Arthur, they're definitely cool for giving users their choice and putting in a pretty nice little package. But if you break your device, you're kind of hung out to dry. So if at the end of this video you have a much better idea of what to expect, or if it turns you off completely from doing it, hey, maybe my video will save a couple folks from messing up their Aya Neos. Really quickly, I also bought the official screen protector for the Aya Neo Geek because it was 10 bucks, and I thought they'd combine the shipping costs. The shipping cost was not combined, even though they came in the same package, so it ended up being like $30, which sucks. But at this point, I tried a bunch of screen protectors for other devices that just don't fit. The Steam Deck is too large, and the Switch OLED is just not the right shape. It goes on pretty much like any other cheap screen protector that I've ever put on. At the end of the day, it's a standard Chinese 2.5D glass screen protector with the usual accessories, and it works just fine. There's no alignment bracket, so take your time with it. It's clear, and I wish I'd covered the whole front bezel, but at least it covers the screen and it does its job. Cool, now onto the main event, the heatsink upgrade kit. I'm gonna bring out everything that I used that wasn't included in this box. You're gonna need something to clean off the old thermal paste. Thermal paste is what helps the heatsink make contact with the chip, and the old stuff needs to go. I have this Arctic Clean fluid that's specific for this, and I use a microfiber cloth. But most people can just use 90% or higher isopropyl alcohol and a piece of tissue. If you have needle nose pliers, those will come in handy for putting screws in and taking out the fan plug. I don't, so I use these heavy duty ones. And I used my own thermal paste because I like the good stuff. If you've got your own screwdrivers, you could keep them on hand, but you don't absolutely need one. For this next thing, I hope you saved your original Aya Neo box. Because in that box is a paper envelope with the tools that they use to remove the side panel that hides the screws on these things. You'll see in a bit that I don't actually end up using them, but I also end up scratching my Aya Neo. Now let's see what we get in the upgrade kit itself. In this envelope we have all the new thermal pads and some extra side covers, which are really important later. We've got a screwdriver that works with every screw in the Aya Neo. It's magnetized and it's thin and it works pretty well, so you don't technically need your own. They also give us some Chinese thermal paste if you don't have your own. Here's a big plastic wedge that we can use to open the case after all the screws are removed. And then we get a bunch of every screw that we need, so you don't have to worry about losing the original ones. Actually, in phone repair, it's a good idea to use new screws every time you do a fix so that you don't end up stripping the old ones. I've done it before a few times and it sucks, so this time I did use all new screws when putting it back together. The old ones I saved in a bag to use as spares if I need them later. We've got some new trigger caps in case you break the old ones. I'm not sure what you get if your Aya Neo isn't black though. And we've got the star of the show, the new heatsink. And now we move on to the main event. The first step is to remove the triggers, and honestly this is pretty scary the first time. If you balk at this step and decide not to do the rest, it's a pretty good chance to reconsider. It helps to move one end up, then work on the other before the whole thing comes off. I put quite a bit of force on these and didn't end up breaking anything, but it definitely took a while. Next, there are these two screws hidden in the corners of the trigger sockets, one in each. These are a little hard to see on camera. They're near the outside edge of the shell. The following step are these infamous Aya Neo 2 side covers. And I've heard these are pretty hard to get out, but I was not expecting this much trouble. These have actually been redesigned in the next generation to be easier to remove, but in this version, they're really stuck on there. I didn't realize this at first either, but there's some double-sided tape holding it to the case, so not only is there no gap, they're actually stuck. Now the good news is that in the bag with the thermal pads, they do give us extra side covers, and these are the redesigned ones with a notch cut into them, so it's way easier to get them off. These old ones are really, really soft, so when you're doing this step, don't be afraid to damage the side pieces. They're going in the trash anyway. So first I thought I'd be smart and use the plastic wedge so that I'm less likely to scratch the case, but it's just not thin enough. 
The plastic tape is there to both protect the rest of your case and help grab the side piece, but for me it was really just getting in the way. You'll also see that the plastic tape has grabbed the paint off the side cover. This is fine since we can throw away these old covers after we're done, and the paint is a lot higher quality on the actual case. But when I first saw this happen, I freaked out a little. Anyway, I struggled like this for almost 10 minutes before I gave up and used the metal pick that came with the plastic tape. This thing will scratch up your case if you're not careful. It'll really mess up the side cover too, but at this point, you kind of have to. In theory, the goal is to get the pick to carve into the side cover and underneath, from the underside of the Ioneo near the triggers, and then wedge the cover piece upward. At this point, I'm super struggling. This went on for almost 20 minutes, and the side piece is pretty destroyed, but it's still not budging. Eventually, I gave up and used a really small flathead screwdriver to dig onto that corner, and eventually the double-sided tape gave up. On the other side, I just skipped to the flathead. Unfortunately, the flathead is so sharp that it also nicks the main case of my Ioneo. It's not the end of the world because I'm hoping to replace the case with a white one eventually, but it still sucks. That's what I get for not following instructions. If you've made it through all of that, there are four more screws under the side covers for a total of six case screws. If you decide to do this, I hope it doesn't take you 40 minutes to figure out the side covers like I did. This wasn't the most delicate part of the repair, but it was by far the most frustrating. With the case unscrewed, I used the plastic wedge to crack it open. You're going to need to go all the way around with it to get all of the clips, and be careful not to push into the case too much, or you might damage the internal bits. With the case fully open, the first thing to do is apply that big graphite piece for the battery cooling. This is a pretty tight fit, so make sure you don't cover up any of the holes or the vents along the bottom edge. The fan has a piece of tape that overlaps with the heatsink. You'll take this off, but you should save it for later by putting it back on the fan itself. Next up is to replace the thermal pads on the battery. The foam on these is really fragile and will come right off, but there's also a film underneath the foam that needs to come out. Make sure you grab the film too before putting on the new pads from the kit. Now we've got three total screws for the fan itself, all the same size. This fan connector is the most fragile piece you're going to touch. Do not grab it by the wires and pull, or you may snap them. You can see that I try to get my fingernails around the actual gray connector at the end before I switch over to using pliers. If you're doing this on your own, you can also just lay the whole fan on the table out of the way without disconnecting it. And I actually recommend that you do that since it's a bit annoying to plug back in too. Next up is the SSD M.2 screw. The SSD will angle up slightly when it isn't screwed down and it should slide out with only a little bit of resistance. Then the Wi-Fi card screw. This will also pop up and you'll have to unhook the tiny antenna wires from the card. These have a little bit of snap to them, but as long as you don't tuck on the wire itself, they should be fine. Then carefully move the antenna wires away. Now we've got a total of six screws for the fan bracket. The screw in the bottom right corner gave me a bit of trouble, and if this happens to you, get the other screws out first, then gently lift on the bracket while loosening the trouble screw. At this point, you should unplug the battery for extra safety. It's the lowest tab next to the battery, and try to get a fingernail underneath it to flip it up like a little Lego. You'll feel a little bit of a snap. Now we're at the feature presentation, the heatsink. There are only four M.2 screws that hold the bracket down, plus a few thermal pads that all need to come off. You might catch here, I actually forgot to take off what the one stuck on the motherboard. So watch out, sometimes they don't come off with the heatsink itself. Here I'm going to use my two-step thermal paste remover to clean up the CPU. If you're using isopropyl alcohol, you'd cover the CPU, wait for it to soak in, and then wipe up the paste. You can also rinse it again with a little more alcohol, but make sure that it's wiped dry before you move on. And definitely do not use water here. I'm not sure exactly what the yellow film is, but if you see that on your Ion Neo, just work around it. As long as it's not on top of your CPU chip, it won't affect the cooling. Once the CPU is clean, we can finally start putting her back together. I get the new heatsink here and put the thermal pads on first, and there are a total of three in this step. The thermal pads also have a second plastic film on the other side, the cut side. Do not forget this little plastic piece. You don't want that in between your heatsink and where it's trying to draw heat from.
I actually cut back to this step right here because I realized later that I messed up. This is one of the steps in the original video where they don't have any text, and I forgot about this insulation tape that goes on the bottom of the heatsink with the copper heat pipes. So all that thermal paste that I put on and took off, I actually have to reapply. Don't make the same mistake I did. This piece will overlap the edge of the heatsink unless you slightly cover up the heat pipes. You can trim it, or you can do what I did and move it in slightly. I didn't want to block any of the exhaust air from getting out through the top. Alright, back to the original timeline. We need to put thermal paste on the CPU chip before the heatsink goes on. If you're watching the original Aya video, they really lathered this stuff on there. We don't have to use quite that much, but it's important to make sure the whole chip is covered so that it can all connect with the heatsink. I still overdo it here, but the idea is that when I put the heatsink on, the pressure will flatten the paste out and make a solid film between the chip and the copper. There's not really such thing as too much paste, but you can definitely use too little. If there's an air gap, your CPU will overheat. When your paste is ready, put the new heatsink face down as squarely as possible, then press down and slide it around a little bit to make sure that the thermal paste makes good contact, and that your screw holes will line up. We're going to get four new M.2 screws from the upgrade kit, and a good habit to have for heatsinks is to tighten them gradually and in a crosswise pattern. For this example, I start in the bottom left and tighten that screw halfway before doing the same thing on the top right, then bottom right, and top left, and repeat. By going slowly and across the CPU, I avoid putting too much uneven pressure on the thermal paste and chip. For something this small, it doesn't matter as much, but on bigger heatsinks, your thermal paste might be uneven, or you could even crack the CPU die, unless you're careful like this. Finally, there's one more long thermal pad on this side of the heatsink. Plug the battery back in right here. It should feel like a slight click. Double check to make sure that it's connected because you're going to have to undo a lot of screws to get back in here. Let's put the fan bracket back into place. Make sure to tuck it underneath this plastic piece that's sticking out from the side of the battery. Next is our six new fan bracket screws. Now for the antenna wires for the Wi-Fi card. You'll see these little channels on the left and right of the fan bracket that they slot into, so gently move those into place. Once that's done, we can screw the Wi-Fi card back in. Slot it in, label facing up, and use the new M.2 screw to keep it in place. Make sure to not clamp the antenna underneath it. Then reconnect the antenna. Make sure these wires don't cross and they should feel like the world's tiniest Lego pieces snapping back into place. If you don't feel a small click, then they aren't connected, so double check here. If you boot up your Aya later and realize that you have no Wi-Fi signal, it might be because you missed this step. When you're set with those, the SSD can come back in, label facing up, then gently pressed in so that the M.2 screw can be inserted. The last internal piece is the fan. If you didn't unplug the fan, then congrats, this will be a little bit easier. If you need to plug the thing back in, again, try not to damage the wires. On the connector end, the red wire is towards the top of the unit, while the blue wire goes toward the bottom. The last bit of internal work here is that piece of tape that we saved on the fan earlier. Reapply it so that it closes the gap between the heatsink and the fan. Now we can finally slap the back cover back into place. Before putting the last six screws in, it's a good habit to power it all on and make sure that things work before closing up your device completely. If you want to be extra careful, you should give your unit a look over before putting the back cover on. Compare it to the video that Ioneo put out for a better view of what things should look like on the inside. For example, I had actually knocked loose my thumbstick connector for the left thumbstick so when I booted back up into Steam, I had absolutely no input. I had to unscrew and take it all apart, just to fix that one thing. Once you've done your double check, we can put the four side screws back on the unit.
The last thing from the upgrade kit are the newly redesigned side cover pieces with a little notch cut into them on the bottom. This makes it a lot easier to open these up later, and I'm also glad they just gave us spares because the original ones are probably pretty destroyed. There's a little nub on each one to prevent you from putting it on the wrong side, and don't forget to take off the adhesive first. We're down to the last two screws, the ones behind the triggers. Originally, these are actually a slightly bigger screw head than the ones used on the side, but in the replacement kit, they're the same screw. Both work just fine. And the last thing for finger comfort, snap on those triggers. I found that after taking them off the first time, they're attached a little bit more loosely than before, but they still work. I guess that's what the replacement ones in the kit are for, but I kept my original ones. And there you have it. The first boot after disconnecting the battery like that might take a while, like up to five minutes. So if it at least turns on, sit tight for a little bit. Hopefully this video helps you avoid making the same mistakes I did or helps you reconsider your life choices a bit before jumping in. But if you decide to take the plunge, good luck. If you need any help or if you end up breaking anything and need a replacement part, try asking on the INEO Discord. Folks there are generally pretty useful.